Welcome at Focus Church to day three of this week's Digital Devo. I know that we're all ready to, to get back together in person, but the good news of these uh, times is that we still are able to gather in these digital spaces and connect with our Lord and Savior uh, through his word and connect with each other even in the chats. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. We'll be talking about prayer and thanksgiving, uh, focusing in on Philippians chapter four, verses four through nine, which reads, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, Whatever is true, whatever is, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. This scripture is very common. It's something that we see inscribed on Bibles, inscribed on devotionals or journals and uh, agendas. We, we see it a lot as a, a generic encouragement for us to lift our prayers to God uh, and with the, the hope of the promise that his peace will invade us and, and surpass our knowledge and understanding. And that's a great thing to hope for. But I think if we actually break down what the scripture is truly saying in the original context, then it'll encourage us even further because we'll know how to rightly apply it. So actually, in a sermon on this passage, Charles Spurgeon, he, he spoke and made this point. The point to which I would draw your attention is this, that whether it be the general prayer or the specific supplication, we are to offer either or both with thanksgiving. We are to pray about everything, and with every prayer, we must blend our thanksgivings. Hence, it follows that we ought always to be in a thankful condition of heart, since we are to pray without ceasing and are not to pray without thanksgiving. It is clear that we ought to be always ready to give thanks unto the Lord. We must say with the psalmist, thus will I bless thee with all while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. The constant tenor and spirit of our lives should be adoring gratitude, love, reverence, and thanksgiving to the Most High. Basically, in the old English language, what Charles Spurgeon is saying is that our prayers, regardless of whether we're, we're saying a generic prayer, whether we're saying the Lord's Prayer or, 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 or some other prayer that we've seen or that has been written out for us, or if we're praying with honest or, or earnest crying out to the Lord saying, God, I need you right here, right now. Both of those prayers need to involve and be surrounded by thanksgiving to the Lord for what he has done and for who he is. Our devotional specifically says we cannot pray to God without remembering the faithfulness and goodness that he has shown. You see, if we consider the, the prayers that we have looked at over the past few weeks in this sermon series, we'll, we'll remember even the Lord's Prayer that it starts off our Father in heaven. We're declaring the character and the goodness and the sovereignty of God. Hallowed be your name. We're saying, God, you are worthy of the praise. You are worthy of, of our adoration. You are worthy of all the glory because of who you are. And as we align our hearts with God by declaring the truth of who he is, it sets our hearts perspective on our situations that we're praying about or we're praying or the people that we're praying for. It, it reminds us that God is sovereign over it all. And that is where the, the door opens within our heart that allows God's peace to invade us. Because we're reminded that the big God, who's bigger than we thought he was, as we like to sing, we're reminding ourselves that he is bigger than our troubles. He's bigger than our worries. He's bigger than our cares. And therefore, I'm able to surrender that to God with the trust and the confidence that he is the one who can do something about these things. And he is the one who cares about me to where even if his doing, his actions in these circumstances and situations are not according to what I expect them to look like, 
he's still the one who's bigger than I thought he was, where he cares and is able to see from angles, vantage points and perspectives that I am not. Therefore, he will meet my needs. He will provide for me. He will comfort. He will heal. But if it doesn't look in the, the same exact way that I want or expect it to, I can trust that he's good. Paul's exhortation to the Philippians is to give thanks to God in the midst of their anxiety about their present situation. Our devotional continues. Paul presents three synonyms for prayer in a row. Prayer, supplication, and request. And you can read on that it, it, our devotional describes each of those. And they're, they're different in, in little tweaks and, and manners. But all of them present a way that we are able to communicate with God in transparency and in vulnerability that says, God, here I am. I'm coming to you, Father, as the supplier of my need, as my refuge, as my protector, as my, my way maker. I'm coming to you and surrendering all that I have to you. In all of these, Paul is encouraging his audience to be specific in their prayer to God, not mouthing vague generalities or going through the motions, but giving voice to the specific desires of our heart. So it doesn't mean that we should not pray the Lord's Prayer. It doesn't mean that we should not pray any scripted prayer. But it does mean that as we grow in our spiritual maturity, that we need to get to a point where we're not just saying the same old, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray to the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray to the Lord my soul to cake. Take, not cake. I like cake. That's why I said that. Uh, we should grow to a place where we are bearing our hearts to God. Again, not that anything is wrong with praying scripted prayers or, or, or prayers that we learned in our childhood or, or prayers that are in scripture. But part of us knowing God and God knowing us is our ability to, to be bare before God and say, God, here I am. I, I, I know where I am. Just like God asked Adam in the garden in, in Genesis, Adam, where are you? It was a question not asking, hey, I, I, I can't find you, Adam. But God saying, Adam, do you know where you are in your sin, in your relationship with me? And it's us in response saying, God, I know where I am. I know where my needs exist and I know where I cannot provide for them, but only you can. That word in verse seven and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's, that's the part of this scripture that we always like to quote and lean on and say, oh, yeah, I want God's peace. I want God's peace. But we have to recognize the conjunction, junction, what's your function? That's specifically right there in that at the beginning of that sentence. And the Greek translation of that word is Kai. Shout out to the Yadins. It's Kai, which basically is saying that there is a a a continuance between the previous sentence and the next. They are connected, saying that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, it comes after we do what is stated between verses four and verse six, after we present our prayers to God and after we are seeking to not be anxious by surrendering to God in our prayer and in our supplication with thanksgiving. That is the context with which we will experience God's peace. And so I hope that we will take away from this the, the importance and the emphasis on our prayer life, that we will see that it's... It, God's peace in some ways is dependent upon how we are pursuing God and surrendering to God our prayers and our petitions. So I hope that these points of reflection will challenge us to be diligent in that and considering how can prayer often be a way of complaining to God about all the bad things that might be happening? How is it that when we're talking about the tough day that we had at work, or the ways that we're worried about our health or, or our, the, the eternities of our friends or of our loved ones. How is it that we can still present those things to God, but they can be only complaints where we're still walking away from that prayer, feeling defeated and discouraged instead of feeling encouraged and uplifted by the sovereignty of our God who's in control? And the second question, what can you thank God for as you pray based on who he is and what he, he has done? What faithfulness of God can you attest to as you begin and end your prayers, bookends, declaring the, the faithfulness of God, the character of God, how holy and sovereign he is? How can you pray in a way that will encourage your hearts because you're remembering the truth of who God is? 
I hope that encourages you in Focus Church, and I hope that you will continue to engage with us in all of our digital connection points, but that you're also eagerly hoping and anticipating and also praying for our return on June 14th. Hope to see you there.